Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the suit. That can only mean one thing. It's cut final o'clock. Hello everyone and welcome to the finale of season one of Let's Go Hammers. I'm Stu Bo. Thank you very much for joining me. If you've enjoyed the series up until this point, you know what I'm going to ask of you. Hit the like button on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well for more Football Manager awesomeness. Uh, since you were last with me, not a lot's happened because we haven't played any games because we finished the league season. But as you can see, as you will already know from watching the save, if you haven't already watched the save, there's a few more episodes for you to watch. There should be a thing up here somewhere, maybe right at the top here. I don't know. It'll be there somewhere. Um, yeah, we've already played through the season. This is the unexpected Europa League final. I did not think we were going to get to this point in this season. Um, but we're going to be playing this today. And then we're going to be doing a season roundup as well. Um, which will allow me to take the suit off. Because, full disclosure, the shirt that I picked up, a little bit too tight for me. So if I look a little bit uncomfortable through the video, there's a reason why. Uh, but we are here for the cup final. Um, and I just think any news that there is to bring you, I think there's a little bit of news. As you can see, I've just been fiddling with a couple of tactic things. Uh, the one bit of news is we're trying to bring in a player, and that player is Thiago Almada. If you've played Football Manager, you probably know who this guy is. I feel like he's been used by many people. Um, he looks really good to me. I have used him in the past to limited success. However, he came up with a very good scout report. Stat-wise, I think he looks very good. Um, I think this might be the time that he'll work for me. He looks like a really talented player, so we're going to bring him in as the attacking midfielder. That's probably going to mean Fornaus is either going to leave the club... Or he's going to move to a deeper role around here, perhaps. I'm going to talk about transfer stuff after the match. Because we're going to do a bit of a season roundup as well. And then we're going to move into season two with transfers in the next episode. But none of that is for today. What matters right now is the Europa League final. And this is the team we are going to be hopefully using to win. Let's go to this screen because that means we're nearly there. Uh, so it's going to be Ariola in goal. Johnson, Diop, Zuma and Cresswell in defence. Sushek and Rice in midfield with Alvarado, Hadji and Vlasic as the attacking midfield three supporting Alvarez. Hadji is injured but he has had an injection so he hopefully will be okay. It's only a twisted ankle so I'd like to think he will be okay for the entirety of the game. If he's not, Fornals is on the bench. We have got a number of other options as well. We've got a couple of young options on here as well mainly because Tarkowski is unregistered, Antonio is injured, and Kral is just not very good. So that is the team. That's the bench. As you can see, Knightbridge is on the bench because Lucas Fabianski's picked up a very recent injury. So yeah. What do you say we go and try and win a European trophy in our first season, huh? Let's do this. Biggest match of the save. Well, I don't know how this is gonna go. I, I <sighs> In a realistic world, we have to consider this. We were never meant to get to the Europa League final, if we're being completely honest. We were never meant to get here. Um, the fact that we are here, in my opinion, shows just how good we have been for the entire season. And we should be very proud of that. Whatever the result in this match is, doesn't really matter. We've overachieved to get here. We've had that entire season has been a big overachievement. So let's take it for what it is. A loss here does not define our season. Getting here defines our season. And we can build for the Champions League next year. And hopefully put in a good effort in that competition. As well as the Premier League again. Hadji's put Alvarez through here. And Alvarez has made it 1-0. But I don't think it's going to count. But it might do. Because the little thing in the corner here. When the assist person comes up. The assist person. The assist maker comes up. It usually gets given. And indeed it has been. A little bit of a bug in football manager. You can tell if a goal gets given. Because the assist provider comes up with the goal and it's happening here Hadji with a perfectly weighted ball to Alvarez we've been waiting for him to show up on camera he has shown up on camera today in the biggest match of the save Alvarez times the run to perfection Hadji's ball is perfectly weighted and it is 1-0 to West Ham in the final in Sevilla wow what a start can we seriously win this trophy this season? Thomas Suchek nearly makes it too. My word. We have trained all of our set pieces in the last two weeks. And we have got our first 11 up on the pitch who have trained those set pieces. And remember, Hadji's going around with an injury. And he's having a great game. Playing that assist beautifully. Deep free kick here from Insignia. But Ariola is equal to it. Oh, oh, oh. The suit works. I have not lost a cup final. Touch wood. 
where I've worn the suit. So I'm going with that. Hadji, what a ball that is to Vlasic. Hadji's having a wonderful game in that attacking midfield role. Looks for Cresswell. Cresswell going to try and provide the ball back. Gets it to Declan Rice. Rice to Hadji. Hadji pulling all of the strings so far. Alvarez now waiting for someone to make a run. Gets it to Vlasic. Vlasic puts it back to Julian Alvarez, who has shown up in the biggest game of the season. It's 2-0 West Ham in the 30th minute. Vlasic with the assist. Lads, I think we're bringing the trophy home. Do I have my little trophy? Yes, I do. It's a little bit early to preempt that, but I've got it here just in case. We've only had five shots. Only three of them have been on target, and we've scored with two of them. What a game! What a game so far. Happy, happy days. I'm a very happy chappy at the moment. Uh, right, let's just see this out then. If we can get a third, that would be great. But I'm all for just seeing this game out. If we can uh, make sure they don't score a goal, that would be lovely. Zuma and Alvarado not having the best of games, so we might need to address that at half-time. Alvarado's having a shocker, in fact. So let's just say that one. And I think we'll take Alvarado off straight away. 6.3 is not good enough for him to stay on the pitch. So I think we'll bring Jared Bowen on. For the second half. And we'll keep Kurt Zuma on for now. In fact, he's playing as a ball-playing defender. That's probably one of the reasons why he's not having a good game. Change back to a central defender on defence. Have a quick chat to Jared Bowen. Pat him on the head. Let's do this, boys. Second half of the Europa League final. Let's do this. I'm going to drop a bit of demand more to Kurt Zuma. Just because he's not been playing that well. Let's hope that Jared Bowen has a good half as well. We pick up the action in our half. Napoli on the ball, but we go oh, Sushek with a great tackle on Fabian and Sushek going to drive forward gets it to Jared Bowen Bowen just needs to run out onto that wing He's actually gone back a little bit and he's gone all the way back to Ariola. What a pass that was he had to get that right uh, And we're just going to control possession a little bit. That is what this tactic is built on it is keeping the ball and Basically trying to dictate the play. We've not been able to do that But we've made the most of the chances that we've had Jared Bowen having two Bites at the apple. Is it bites at the apple? Bites at the cherry? I don't know. Either way, he had a couple of shots. Vlasic, Hadji, Alvarez. And Alvarez has a European final hat trick. Wow. Wow. Julian Alvarez has shown up in the Europa League final. And we have got at least one hand on the trophy, if not both of them at this point. There's a bit of ping pong going on. It's Hadji with another assist. Alvarez with his hat trick in the 62nd minute. Lads, we've got one for the cabinet. We've got one for the cabinet, and I am delighted. We might get another one here. Cresswell with the corner, whips it in, and Thomas Sushek hits the post, and no one can get on the end of it. Oh, boy. Right, we'll get to the 70th minute, and then we'll make some substitutions. Or at least one. Well, no, we can make some, actually, because we've got the multiple substitutions that you normally get in Europe. Right. Uh, Hadji, bless him. He's having a very good game, but he is tiring. So we're going to bring four nails on. Vlasic as well having a good game. Uh, I think we might keep him on, actually. Kurt Zuma's had a shocker, so we're going to bring Chris Metham on. And then we've got one substitution left. And I'm tempted to bring Al Turk on when it comes to that. But we'll stick with that for now. Uh, what a game. What a game. The lads have done themselves proud here today. Absolutely fantastic. And we are going to make that final substitution now. Uh, Al Turk or Gawiri. I'm thinking one of those two for Alvarez. Because Alvarez has had a great game. We can rest him now. The game is won. The game is won. I think we'll bring Gawiri on. Uh, Al Turk's on the bench. He doesn't need to play in a European game of this magnitude. Let's bring Gawiri on. We have absolutely dismantled Napoli in this game. And they might get a consolation. But I don't think they have enough time. Johnson did well there. No, he didn't. It's a foul. Or at least they're looking at it being a foul. I thought it looked fairly innocuous. Insignia, I thought, made a little bit too much of that. But it is a penalty, so we do have to be a little bit careful now. Lorenzo Insignia to take. Can he beat Areola? Yes, he can. Well, we knew that was coming. Napoli are too good a team not to score in this game. But they have now got to try and score twice more to take this extra time. And they've only got five minutes to do it. So we are going to get to the 89th minute. We'll do it now, in fact. Uh, and we're just going to try and shore things up. Stay on our feet as well. Just try and keep the ball. I'm going to drop a bit of praise to the boys as well. But I think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, first trophy of the save. And it's the Europa League 
that we have won. What a performance from the boys. Julian Alvarez uh, winning the game for us. I've just realised I was going to bring Mark Noble on to lift the trophy. It's Declan Rice instead. I don't mind. Either way, there I am in my little suit there. I'm not wearing a matching one, but I have got a matching trophy. Get in, boys. Get in. Happy, happy days. Wow, I did not expect us to win a trophy in the first season whatsoever. And we got to the semi-final in two other competitions as well. We've had such a good season. How have we... I don't even know how we've done it. I don't even know how we've done it. My hands still smell of hair. I've, uh, full disclosure, I had a shower just before I started recording. I literally just did my hair just before. And I can still smell all of my hand, my hair stuff on my hands. Um, not that you need to know that. Um, I've just noticed that. Is that a simulate simulate match button? I didn't realise that had been added on. Uh, okay, interesting. I'm using Zealand and FM Enhanced Skin, by the way, just in case anyone's wondering. I've updated it, and I didn't realise that button was there. None of that matters, though, because... Wow. Wow. What a performance. Julian Alvarez. I have tried not to criticise him throughout the season because he has been a bit anonymous in some games but he's had a hell of a half of the season if we have a look at his stats here let's just have a quick note so he played 16 premier league games scored 11 got two assists the man's a freak the man's insane and if you look at all the other competitions in domestic cup competitions he scored five in six in european competition he actually didn't score a single goal for us in the europa league until the final and then he scored three in the final is he a big game player? Is that what it is? Let's have a look at his coach report. Uh, enjoys big matches and is consistent. That that absolutely fits, actually. He's very much that. What a performance. What an absolute performance. We've exceeded expectations in everything. Absolutely everything. We've got a bit of money as well. Bunch of players have got medals, which is good to see. I've been praised by the West Ham supporters. Does that mean? Am I on the favoured personnel? I've got to be, surely. Took me a minute on this skin to find out where it is. Had to go to info just here. And I can confirm that I'm not on the favoured personnel. Um, but I would imagine we just need another season like this. And we will end up somewhere on this list here. Um, I mean, you look at the legends of this club. You know, Bobby Moore, Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters. There's some absolute legends of the game on this list here. It's pretty cool, actually. It's pretty cool to see that. So if we can get on that list, it would be fantastic. But... Yeah, that took, that took far longer for me to find than it I actually did. Um, the West Ham board, very happy as well. The fans are happy. Yanis Hadji is out for three to four weeks. That's absolutely fine. He had a great game, as did Alvarez. What a performance for that lad. What a performance. Uh, and James Tarkowski is now no longer unhappy about not being in the Europa League squad because we won it without him. Right, I'm going to come back probably without the suit on for season review. Don't go anywhere. I mean, it's going to be an instant for you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little click of the fingers, and I'll be back with that suit for the season review. There we go. We're back. And we're back for the season review, as you can see on screen as well. So let's just crack on into that, shall we? So, what a season we've got to review. Uh, new arrivals. Uh, the signing of the season was given to Ianis Hadji. I have to agree, to be honest with you. He played in... Uh, what's that? 43 games, 9 goals, 22 assists. The man is a freak, genuinely. On paper, he doesn't look that good when you just look at his star rating. Stats-wise, he looks good apart from his physicals. And I don't think his mentals are that good, but his technicals are superb. Uh, in fact, we can have a cheat and have a look. Yeah. Technicals are great. Mentals are alright. Physicals are bang average. But he's got two great feet. He's got a couple of good, stat uh, good uh, traits there as well. The man's a machine. He's just an assist machine. He's been fantastic for us, and I have to agree. Signing of the season. Kurt Zuma obviously came in this season, but he was a signing that was made in real life, so we don't count that. Chris Meffin did a decent job. Got him on the cheap, and he did a good job for us when he came in. Calafiori as well did, I think, pretty good, uh, but we did have to pay a reasonable loan fee for him. Ariola was one that was done in real life, so we can't claim anything for that. Gawiri, I think, considering he had injury problems... 18 starts, 10 goals, 3 assists. Not too bad. We've got him on a permanent next season. Let's see if he kicks on. Palacios came in. And the fact that we got him in and we we just had to pay some of his wages, I think, was good. He's made a good impression. If we could get him on loan again next season, I would be tempted to. Roberto Alvarado wants to stay at the club. I'm inclined to keep him at the club. But 
he has had a few games where he's not done anything. So he needs to be a bit more consistent for me to consider that. Nikola Vlasic has been good at spells, but also has had some barren spells too. But I'm, I mean, he's a signing that we didn't make. So, but I am thinking about his place in the team. Do we keep him? Do we try and upgrade him? Tarkowski in the bin. We're going to try and get rid of him this season if we can, because we've got uh, Matthias Ginter coming in. Kral, not our signing. I mean, we haven't had to pay for him, but he's not been very good. So he will be going back to his club. Transfers out, I'm not going to dwell on too much, but we got rid of Masuaku, we got rid of Lanzini. There's a few of the players who left the club on our watch as well, and there's some of these uh, we had no say in whatsoever. We kind of just arrived, and a lot of them had already gone. So some of these we're not really that bothered about. Uh, this season's results, well, Europa League, we know what happened with that. We've just won it. And you can see there's the run there. We only lost two games in the entire run. One was against Real Sociedad. One was against Benfica. I need to see if there's a real name fix, actually, because that's going to bug me a little bit. Um, but other than that, we've won so many games in the Europa League this season. And that has been a theme this year, is winning games. Go to the Premier League. We were expected to finish in the top half of the table. So from 10th upwards, anywhere would have been good. We finished third, and we finished in the Champions League spots. That's outside of what we could have reasonably hoped for. If you look at our results... What an ins especially this run here. What an insane season we've had. We've only lost five games. We've lost less than Liverpool. It was just draws that meant that we... We finished one point behind second. I didn't realise that. My word, what a season we've had. And Julian Alvarez was our top scorer in the league with 11 goals. But that was 11 goals from January onwards. Scored in his debut. Scored some very important goals for us. It's been fantastic, and we've almost maxed out attendance. We might see whether we can get the ground extended. Uh, in the FA Cup, we were expected to reach the fifth round, <laughs> reach the semi-final. Julian Alvarez, again, our top scorer with four goals. Got knocked out in extra time against Liverpool. It says 1-1, but that's only after normal time. We got knocked out in uh, in extra time, so that should say 2-1, really. That might be a bit of a glitch. And then Carabao Cup, we were expected to get to the fourth round. Got to semi-final as well. Now, we were well thumped in the semi-final, but we got there nonetheless. We beat Liverpool on the way to it, which is pretty incredible. Another great performance. Antonio Diop and Guerrero were all joint top goal scorers with two goals. So, we shared the goals around in that competition. So, we've done pretty well in all of those uh, competitions. Biggest win was against Napoli of all teams, 6-1. I've just realised we played Napoli in the group stage. I'm clapping a lot. Apologies. We played Napoli in the group stage and we thumped them both times. Why were we worried about that game? I was so worried about going against them and we absolutely smashed them in the group stage. I need to pay more attention. Uh, match to remember, us beating Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. It was a great game. Uh, that 93rd minute winner was intense. And goal of the season, apparently, was in the FA Cup against Southampton. It was Guerrero's goal. Uh, can we see it? Because if we can see it, I'd quite like to have a look at it. Um, I wonder whether it's one of the goals that I've recorded as a goal of the season contender, which I will be getting to. I will be getting to that. I'm just trying to think. So it's not going to be this first one, which is Alvarez's goal. Uh, Suchet, Vlasic, Guerrero into Alvarez. That's a nicely worked goal, actually. So this next goal should be the one that is considered our goal of the season. Once we've got through the season review, we will be looking at what I consider our goal of the season to be. And Guerrero, that is a lovely goal, to be fair. If I haven't recorded that one as a separate one, that needs to get counted. Because I'll have missed that one. But that was a superb goal. That was stupendous. Finances-wise, we've got nothing to compare it to, so all of this is going to look good. I'd like our reputation to go higher as a result of the Europa League win, but it hasn't at the moment. Uh, in terms of shirt sales, it's everyone you'd expect, really. It's good to see Alvarez is on there. Declan Rice and Sushak, obviously. Noble as club captain as well. He might not be club captain next season. I might give that honour to Declan Rice. I haven't made a full decision on that yet. But Declan Rice is going to play more games like he did this season. Noble's not. I and mean, he's probably going to fall down the pecking order. Because I imagine he's 33, 34. He's going to start dropping off even more. Team of the year is this one. It's interesting that some of these don't have uh, the stats on. Which I don't really understand. But Ariola in goal. Ben Johnson, Diop, Zuma and Cresswell as a defence. I can't argue with that at all. Ben Johnson came into the side when Kufal was injured. And he's made that position his own. We are going to look to upgrade that in the summer. That's a minor spoiler for what we're looking at in the summer. Um, but he's done a good job for us. Same with Cresswell. With Cresswell's age, he's 32, I think. We are going to need to upgrade him as well. The midfield two was always going to be Sushek and Rice. They have been fantastic for us. Bowen, Hadji and Vlasic, I'm inclined to agree. 
Um, in fact, that entire team, obviously, uh, Julian Alvarez up front, definitely. I would agree. That is definitely our best 11 for this season. And in terms of accolades, I didn't win a single thing. I came second and third in Manager of the Month so many times. I don't know how I haven't won an award this season because it's been insane. Fans player of the season, Issa Diop. I don't know if I'd agree with that. I think Yanis Hadji would be the one who gets it for me. But Yanis Hadji does win young player of the season, which is good. And signing of the season, which is absolutely fair. Uh, goal of the season, as we saw, was Amine Gawiri. We'll get to that in a bit. Top goal scorer was Julian Alvarez. 19 goals. And that's just from January, which is pretty insane. Most assists, Yanis Hadji with 22. Most player of the match awards, Aaron Cresswell with 8. Highest average rating was Diop with 7.4. And most passes completed per 90 minutes was Diop with 79. He also, at different points of the season, was our best pass completion ratio with 99%, which is insane to me uh obviously these don't really mean much because it's the first season but Hadji has the record for assists with 22 Ariola has the record for clean sheets with 10 remember he and Fabianski kind of shared goalkeeping responsibilities this season player of the match awards was eight with Aaron Craswell worst discipline while seven yellow cards from Sushek and Ahmed Al-Turk the youth player who came through in our youth intake this season played on the final day of the season to become West Ham's apparently youngest ever player I don't know whether uh, Declan Rice or Reese Oxford may have that in real life, but in this universe, it's Ahmed Al Turk. And as you can see, a couple more wonderful things there. I think that's been a really good season, personally. Okay, so as good as that goal from Guiri was, I've decided it wasn't my goal of the season. So I'm going to present to you my top three goals in reverse order for this first season at West Ham United. Starting with the third best goal, which was Julian Alvarez versus Manchester United. And it is an absolutely fantastic goal. Uh, Palacios knocks it out to Bowen. Bowen just hits a long pass to Alvarez. Alvarez takes a couple of touches, runs with it, and just leathers it into the back of the net. It's a glorious, glorious thing. And I had, I had a lot of fun watching it. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, the next best goal, in my opinion, was the goal that Iannis Hadji scored uh, against Arsenal very recently. Um, it was one of the games off camera. Ben Rama picks the ball up in the middle, gets it to Sushek, who does a lovely turn. He, in turn, knocks it back to Johnson. And Johnson just chips it over to Hadji, who hits it on the volley first time. That was going to be my goal of the season. That was going to be the one. But then... I remember the goal score, score, I can't speak, it's such a good goal, scored earlier in the season. It's a goal from Vlasic against Fulham, and it is just an absolute peach of a goal. An absolute peach of a goal. It's a throw-in from Aaron Cresswell. He gets it to Vlasic, who in turn knocks it back to Rice. Rice into four nails, four nails back to Vlasic. Vlasic switches it from his left foot to his right foot and just curls it. The curve on it to get it into that top corner was a thing of beauty. So... Purely just for how beautiful that goal looked, I have to give it to Vlasic. Vlasic gets our goal of the season. He wins the... I'm going to call it the Vlasic Award. Um, it'll probably change every season, to be honest with you. But uh, Vlasic wins the Vlasic Award for the best goal of the season. Um, and I'm very, very happy, to be honest with you. It was a wonderful, wonderful finish. Um, in terms of what we do now, I think we just accelerate through to the transfer window i think the next episode is going to be a mixture of transfer window and first game of the season uh Cresswell named us the europa league player of the season how about that 11 appearances eight assists eight clean sheets and second and third are two of our players as well with kurt zuma and thomas sushek well let's pat those boys on the head wonderful stuff wonderful stuff victor Osimhen wins the golden boot we've got that up because he's the uh one of our players that we're looking at and as you can see four of our boys in the europa league team of the season cresswell diop zuma and sushek showing how good our defense has been that has been what has done it for us so squad for next season as you can see some of the players are already gone on holiday uh we'll get some of the, some of these youngsters as well so we're not going to have calafiori next season we're not going to have Ariola. We have tried to extend his loan deal, but it didn't work. And I think we are where... So we get with Palacios as well. So we have got gaps in the team that we need to fill. I'm looking to move Kufal on. So if we move Ben Johnson and him around and we move that out. And we also want a backup for Aaron Cresswell. So let's move him out as well. So at this moment in time, these are the main three positions I'm looking to strengthen. Goalkeeper, right back, left back. Ideally, I want a right back who's more attacking as well. So, 
let's just sort that out because that's going to bug me. Those are the main three positions we're looking to fund. We have got, as a transfer budget, £35 million, there or thereabouts. We are looking to spend a little bit of that on Thiago Armada, as you've already seen. We're looking to spend £4 million up front on that. So that leaves us with, let's call it 30 Let's round down a little bit. £30 million. If we can move on, Kufal, for around 10 to £12 million, let's say. We could probably get to up to £20 million for him, apparently. But let's say we get around £10 million for him. £10 million makes that up to £40 million. If we can then maybe move another player on, I'm thinking one of the wingers, maybe Ben Rama. We could probably raise up to £50 million, I reckon. I mean, Ben Rama apparently is worth up to 40 so... I don't know how true that is. Aston Villa are interested in him, so we might try and offload him to them. Uh, Alvarado, I'm going to try and keep, I think. Uh, I mean, there's a few players who are... I oh, didn't want to click on that, Stu. There's a few players who are wanted. Um, oh, Tarkowski as well. If we could move him on, that might be £5 million or so. Um, there's a few players who are wanted by other clubs. If we can move them on, I think we could generate some decent funds around the £50 million mark. Fifty million for two fullbacks and a goalkeeper. We can use the uh, instalments to try and stretch that out a little bit uh, if we need to. Four nows as well is a player I'm considering letting go, especially if we get Thiago Armada. Um, although I'm thinking four nows if we need to could play as a ball-winning midfielder. He has got uh, 14 tackling and his marking is not too bad either. Um, not the strongest in the world, but he can do a decent job. He's someone worth having around because of his uh, flexibility and positions. So. I think we might try and get another another central midfielder in if we can. But honestly, other than those positions, I'm pretty happy. Unless some kind of absolute superstar becomes available and wants to come to us. So that's what I'm thinking for now. I'm going to leave the episode here. I'm going to start working in the transfer window. And when we get to the 1st of July, I'll hit the record button, show you the business that we've done. And then we'll do a little bit more transfer window stuff before the first game of the season. That all sounds like fun. I think I think it's been a very successful episode, personally. Um, I think it's been a very successful episode indeed. I've had a lot of fun with it. So, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, and how could you not have enjoyed watching us win the uh, Europa League, which I nearly forgot the name of, please leave a like on that video. Subscribe to the channel. Share this video on social media if you've enjoyed the series and you know other people who would also enjoy it. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what we could do. Give me some suggestions on what you think we could do in the transfer market. I can't promise that you'll be able to have them listened to because I'm recording this in advance. But let me know what you're thinking because I can always do it in the future. But hopefully you have enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Take care and bye-bye for now.